everyone. We are very excited to be here today with Brielle. And thank you for letting us come to the Dream Center today with you. Brielle needs no introduction. She's been on multiple shows now, and I'm sure you have seen her around. But she allowed us to come today to tour the Dream Center. Can you tell us a little bit about what is this? What is the Dream Center here in Hilldale, Utah? So the Dream Center, it, it was in the past Warren Jeff's house, but now it is like a recovery program and a center for people to heal from their trauma mm. and, you know, whatever experiences. Yeah. And it's basically just getting the extra support yeah. to start their life out here if they want to. Or ripple effects is a big one that we see a lot in our ripple effects of what happened in this community. Mm -hmm. Like if there's fires or, you know, um, sometimes it's even domestic violence from like somebody not understanding how to date and, you know, different things. But like there's a lot of ripple effects of people that come through this. So a safe haven for anyone that needs it. So tell us a little bit about the actual building that we're standing in front of. Okay, so the Dream Center, it's 45 rooms. It was 28,000 square feet when we, I mean, yeah, it still is 28,000. <laughs> <laughs> they sometimes get mixed up on the numbers, but when I got it from the UEP, it was 28,000 square feet in their records. So um, wow. I usually say it's big, that. It's a big building. <laughs> yeah, 45 rooms. It has almost a, a bathroom in almost every room has three kitchens, they use two of them. Wow, and this was at one time Warren, Warren Jeff's house, wasn't it? Yes, this was Warren Jeff's house. So, and, and did you live in Warren because? Yeah. Yeah, okay, for because don't know. for those that don't know, I'm sure you all know it by now, but you were one of Warren's wives. Yeah, I was, I was the 65th wife of Warren Jeff. I was awarded at this house and um, found the Dream Center I mostly found the Dream Center through doing things like this. So like, and then there was some people in town that started bringing people to tour. And okay. then they linked me up with the Phoenix Dream Center. Wow. It's a worldwide organization. Oh, Dream that's Center good to know. Is, yeah. Okay, so it's not just here. It's in a it's lot of places. Over, yeah. Okay, good. So I lived here for four months when I was married to Warren before he took his family away from Colorado City. Okay. So um, it was a Target house for Warren himself because he was running from the law. He was afraid the law was watching this house all the time because this is where he lived before he became the leader. Wow. Before he ran from the law. So I didn't, I don't have a lot of bad memories here. I have more sad memories because it was the mothers that were here that he had taken their kids away from. Mm. So they were crying a lot. So that's yeah. what I, but I have way more good memories now. I've okay. been here like it's been about seven years. So like, okay, so you've been yeah. back here now for about seven years. Yeah. Has it always been the Dream Center during those seven years? No, for the first year it wasn't. It, we called it, in the paperwork, we actually called it the Dream House. Oh, wow. And found out about a year later that it was going to be the Dream Center. Okay. So that was interesting. So if you owned the house, how did you, did you get to own it outright like for your family and then you allowed the Dream Center to come in or what yeah. did that process look like? So the process, looked like I did media tours. So like I did, like if you watch Inside Edition, my interview with them, like it's before I found the Dream Center asking for people who might want to come. Um, there was quite a few people who wanted to see the house because it was like a high profile house. They wanted to see it anyway. So I just got the chance to talk a lot. And that's actually why I went public because of the need to have oh, a crisis wow. house at that time. I was like, there, there were small organizations, but they just put them on a list, you mm -hmm. know, find host homes, you know, which yeah. was a good process. It just wasn't, you know, all that we wanted <laughs> yeah so now they do have more houses in other organizations i know holding the help has another house mm -hmm. you know and they did have like six rooms for a while yeah now they have another house which is more rooms in salt lake but like here is like 45 rooms like we said so and it's also in this area which is a different you know it's southern utah so right um and this is this is this yeah. community short creek is home to a lot of these people like yourself that yeah. dealt with the trauma and yeah. had to go through all of that so how does it feel for you to be living here? Is it is it triggering at all, or have you gotten past all? Well, that? I don't live here. I have my own house in town too. But I mean, living in Short Creek. Oh, living in Short Creek. Yeah, I do live. I, I it is triggering sometimes, but like we usually just you know stay at it because we're so passionate about the cause and stuff. Yeah, that's good. You know, because I wasn't really raised in this community either. Oh, that's true. You, I was born you, in Sandy. Uh huh. So it was more Salt Lake area. And I came down here with my family when I was 16. I see. Okay. So, wow. Um, married Warren two years later and traveled all over all these places. Mm. Came back, but yeah. It's surreal for me to be standing in front of this house. I mean, this was 
a house <laughs> as a young boy living out here that we all looked up to like oh it's warren's house you know yeah. and, and we i helped with the the big wall around this property and different things but never actually been inside so i oh, am really? excited to take a peek inside and kind of see what you've all done with the place and turn it into this safe haven for people yeah it is different like they've done a lot of remodel and stuff that you have like an adopt a room program because it is kind of an older house now i mean it's like when they built this i can't remember the year they built it i was r pretty small it must have been back in about 2003 something like that somewhere and they around had a, that time they had a house already here when they did the extension mm -hmm. too so they have an adopt a room program where they go in and they take out the carpet on the walls you know like and they'll Sometimes we model the whole room and sometimes they leave the carpet just on the floor and mm. and then we go in later and take that out too. You know, okay. like it's kind of a constant Slowly thing. Slowly but surely, okay. But it had they have got a lot of it done. So it won't be the same as it was in the past. In okay. the past it will be like if you watch the inside edition and stuff, it has like floral carpet. Yes, I, I think we've seen some of yeah. these. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and now it's like not it's like all that. different. Okay. Well that's yeah. okay. You know, it's probably better now than it was then. So <laughs> yeah. So when you talk about adopting a room, um how much like how big of a donation does it take to be able to do that? And what's the process if somebody watching today is like, I would love to do that, what's the process for being able to adopt a room? So you would go to the Short Creek Dream Center website and if you can't find the information yourself then you find the phone number and you call and we have a, a department here that can explain it all to you. But basically, um, you do buy everything for the room, and it, it's up to you how you want to price it because you buy what you want to buy. Wow. And then they have like a plaque on the outside of the room. After it's finished, they'll hang up the name of your organization or the name of the person, and you get to like call the room whatever you want to call it. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think we need a room. <laughs> yeah. Are there any available? I'm Probably. sure there is. <laughs> if it's not here, it could be the transitional house. It, you know, the transitional house is uh, in Colorado City, but it's like, it's also one of those houses where the people that have been here for a while um, who are in college or going to save up for a down payment on their house, have more long-term goals, mm. have been successful, already finished the basic program, then they go over to the, tra the transitional house so that we can open up beds for people in crisis. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Interesting, but that would be nice to have a place to be able to send people if they need it. Yeah. Maybe we can do a fundraiser and let all of our viewers kind of donate and as a channel community yeah. have a, a room. That would be, that really would cool. be amazing. Yeah. yeah. One kind of last question before we go inside. Of course. I had to is if anybody's watching this and they are in crisis or they're thinking they can't leave because they don't have anywhere to go, what is the process like for somebody leaving? Okay. Community. Do they have to be FLDS? Can they be from any polygamous community? What does that look like for them? So they prioritize people from polygamy groups. They they usually just call this number. I can actually give you the number if you want. It's like the main line here. Yeah. And so it's 435-680-1390. It's the Dream Center crisis line. And we have an application process. So like they just have to either show up or we can email them an application. They do have to fill out an application. But if it's like really serious, like usually they'll just pull them in and do the application here so okay yeah if they're if they're in a situation where they're not safe they just and also we have like vans and we do figure out like if they need a bus ticket here and pay their way to on like Greyhound until we can go to St. George and pick them up and bring them here like we wow. do a lot of that too yeah I noticed the big buses that you have as we pulled yeah. in so a lot of resources to help people which is just amazing and it's not just FLDS it's a lot of you prioritize all the polygamous groups around the area yes but okay. the um we do take people from other places also but like we do prioritize the polygamy group people because usually when you go to a domestic violence shelter they have deadlines and this place is for more long term so it's like helping people from a to z like it's it's some people come in without an id like you know and that's a real thing with like being born in even Warren Jess group, there have been some children who never got ID. Yeah. So to go to a regular domestic violence shelter wouldn't work for them. So to come here, we help them find people at the birth, you know, it's a longer process. So we have to have a different type of program. We have a program where they have, they set their own goals. And as long as they're making progress toward those and keeping peace in the house, because with this many people, we have to have standards. Yeah. And that's a big one for some people. 
But if you can do both of those things, which a lot of people do, then they can stay for years. And that's why we have the transitional house also. Wow. Absolutely fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's just, I mean, just the idea that there is something that is catered towards the people and understanding towards the people that have been in a situation like the FLDS or the Warren Jeffs yeah. group. That, yeah. you, like you say, they don't have document documents to be able to prove who they are even. So Yeah. And they can create those from scratch with finding people at the birth. Right. And stuff like that. Wow. So, yeah. Just amazing. Well, should we go <laughs> oh, to the step right here? <laughs> Better watch where I'm stepping. Yeah. Put this coat in. And <laughs> All right. Get in. Guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is the entryway. Um, we have a sitting room right here, and we use it quite often for, like, people who come to visit people that live in the house. We'll put them in there where we find them, or it's for people who need to fill out an application. Sometimes we'll set them in here. We just use it for all kinds of things. I like this. And also the almost has, like, a library feel Yeah. <laughs> with all the books on the wall there. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And then this other office over here is the office that I usually work out of. It's the RA office. We have a team of people and we rotate because there's like not, you know, we can't be here all the time, and, mm -hmm. but we need somebody here all the time. So we need a team of people. This is, yeah, the RA office. What did this used to be, this entryway before? Yeah, so this the... used to be um, Warren's office. Yeah. Oh, did it? So <laughs> yeah. it was an office? Yeah, even? it was okay. an office. Then, yeah. So they have like um, the like we'll help people get their meds and stuff because we have to keep those with us so that we don't have, you know, overdoses and stuff. Mm -hmm. so like we, we have a sign out sheet. We track all of that stuff for everybody. Uh, we also drive people to their jobs, you know, in town. If they oh, have wow. a job in town, we'll drive them often to their job and back and so, until they can get their own car. Right. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of these people probably don't have driver's licenses. Well, we'll we help them through okay. all those processes. If they have court fees or you know stuff like that, we also help people get attorneys sometimes, or maybe discount on wow. the price of attorneys. That's amazing. Yeah. That's happening a lot right now, where people are trying to get custody of their children. That's a really kind of common model. one. That's a really common one, because um, when when people leave, you know, any any situation, usually it's it's not all the time. Both of them, you know, mm. we do take in families too. We have men in the basement here. And we have women and children upstairs mostly. We do have some men come in with their ch children. We will accommodate that, but most of the time it's the women with mm -hmm. the children. That makes sense. Yeah, and so the upstairs are a little more accommodating <laughs> for the kids. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, this is um, the staff kitchen now, and this is the original kitchen that was here. And this has never been remodeled. You can kind of tell that. Wow, well, I was gonna say with the with the old yeah oak look cabinets. Yeah. So this is all original. Yep, this is all original. Yeah. Wow. And this is what we call the theater room. So Ooh. it's um, where we have a movie night once a week. Oh. They don't get to keep TVs in the room because we want them to be up and active. Mm -hmm. But we have TVs throughout the house in common areas. So, so I must ask, I'm assuming this wasn't a theater room before? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Way. And you can see the chimney from here. The Prano Bay, yes. Yeah, the Prano Bay, that's sure really get that in common, there. yeah. Yeah. I remember as a young boy when I first saw that sign put up there, I thought, oh, that's so cool, <laughs> Prano Bay. And now I look at it and have a different feeling towards it. So. Yeah, but the thing also is like, it's to me, it's better than the Keep Sweet one. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree with that. If it said Keep Sweet, I'd be keep, like, okay. We keep might Sweet means something, something very interesting in this community. Yeah. So this one I'm going to let you see too. This one was, I think, wasn't here when I was here, but it was built in between me getting it and F other FLDS people living here, I think. There's a bathroom, and this is a sensory room where we have therapy a lot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So this is just a place to bring people where they can talk in private yep. with the therapist. It feels so comfortable and cozy. Yeah, they have like a sound machine on the outside, you know, like, you know, so. Wow. Nobody can hear what they're saying, you know, in the other rooms, but good. Yeah, they um, we do have therapists that come here, and we also do some outsourcing. So, like if they're on the computer, they would still sit in here most of the time. Amazing, That's wonderful. Yeah. I like that the the setup in that room, very comfortable. Yeah. And then um, we we probably should go downstairs right now because 
I'm thinking that if you, what I found is that if you go downstairs and all the way upstairs right after some people, you know, it, it's just harder. Okay. So we'll just go downstairs sure. right now. Yeah. So this is, um, I want to show you this. You probably remember this from other shows. But this is the closet, the famous closet. The famous closet. I think I know what's about to happen. Yeah. So you pull the latch and you open it up. Oh, the secret oh, room. There's a secret room. We store things actually in there now. So, so remind our yeah, viewers, what, what, what was this used yeah. for? So we think it was for records. Okay. Um, so Because they did have records in the FLDS even mm -hmm. though they didn't want the, you know, of all the marriages and stuff, they had to keep track somehow. And they didn't want the world to have them. Oh, I see. Yeah. So now, do you mind if I peek in there? Sure, I'm just curious yeah. how big this actually is. It's not that big. It's under the front porch. Okay. But it does go back a little bit farther than you, than it looks like. Yeah. So, yeah. interesting. And even right here, there's shelves right yeah. behind the door. If you look at that bottom one down there, it says mask, masks on it. And it's original, so... Oh, it says masks? Yeah. Oh, what were masks used for? <laughs> Probably hiding. Yeah, that's what I would think. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. See, now that we've been through COVID, when someone says mask, I think of like the, the, no, the medical mask. Actually... And like actual mask to disguise yourself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, and that type of thing was found in Warren's car when they found him. So that's not surprising. Yeah. So I'm going to wow. close this so that we don't, you know spoil it for somebody else when they <laughs> <laughs> want to see keep it keep the secret a secret <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay wow this is just this to think that this was a home right i mean it looks like a hotel that one we're in the middle of remodeling like you know getting it ready for an office for one of the people so this one i think we want to see this is what we call the sitting room it has a tv in here so like they can all gather, all the men and can have their own space to okay. watch TV or yeah. whatever. They can watch in the theater too, but sometimes they don't want to watch the same movie. So we just have a place on each floor. Even see where... some gaming controls there. Yeah. I think this one is what we call the clothing closet right now. I don't think that we are going to keep it here forever, but it has a lot of the clothing so they can go shopping. Energy and energy. Oh wow! So this is yeah. this is clothing that people can just come and use as they Shopping, need. Shopping, yeah. Any community member, we take people through the clothing closet like all the time. It's free. It's wow. a nonprofit. Do you accept donations for this closet? Um, we do at times. Sometimes we close it for donations because we get so many. Oh, that's oh okay. Wonderful. It's a good problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too yeah. many clothes. So this room right here is in the middle of painting. So I don't know if anybody's in here, but we were painting these. These uh, for the box spring, you know. Mm. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so this room is all kind of clean. So I was going to show you that. Lots of projects you have going on, it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> and this is Short Creek Dream Center. That's what we call this branch. So it is Dream Center, but it's Short Creek Dream Center. This one's really nice. Somebody just remodeled this one. And we're keeping it for interns. So I, if I can get the lights to turn on. Keeping it for interns. What does that yeah. mean exactly? So like people that are volunteering. Oh wow! They're, it's so nice. We don't want to place put, for them like, to stay. <laughs> we want to keep it nice. So and did, remind me, you said that only men stay down here, or yes, okay, men and some staff because we we can't clear out all the staff because. That would leave protection issues. Right. Yeah. That makes perfect so sense. So this is an example of a room that you could sponsor. So yeah. You could pick like okay the decorations and yeah they did a the map of, of the, the world. world and like if you go into uh, we probably won't go over there but like they have like one room with dinosaurs and you know, stuff like wow. that now somebody did a whole room in the school so yeah I love it some of the rooms are closed like you see the doors closed that means people are in there so we wouldn't go in there like you'll see like if you look at this one that we just walked out of see like this one is a plaque oh this there we go. one is a plaque like yeah we try to so there's keep the, them there's off. an example of yeah. the plaque actually. yeah oh i love it so that people can name them yeah their quotes yeah fantastic love it. yeah was all of this yeah. visible has this always been visible that, like this? They, that's the sprinkler system they had to put that in after the oh so this center. is this is aftermath okay because of the the commercial licensing that uh, makes perfect sense yeah so that was not here before no it wasn't so yeah we'll go up here this is the mission house 
So that was another building that the Dream Center bought after. So the transitional house is in Colorado City. This is the Mission House, and they park in between both properties. It's a road, but that Mission House has 15 rooms. It was Nephi's or something. Yes, I, I believe. I know it was one of Warren's brothers back yeah. in the day. So that one they so people they bought that separately from the Dream Center oh. later, but um, it's so that people can bring whole crews to stay at the house. They book it the trip online at shortcreekdreamcenter.org, mm -hmm. bring their whole crew, and they they go around the community and paint and oh, wow. meet and help out. So with mission the in the sense of like yeah. a service mission. Yeah, thing. service mission. So this is. Um, the mud room, and this was painted after the Dream Center got it by somebody in the community. Whoa! Yeah, they did I amazing. I love that. They did a great job with that. Yeah, and they're they're building like a bathroom trailer, I think, out there. So that's going to be for extra bathrooms over at the Mission House. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah, anyway, interesting. So this is yeah the mud room. This is the new. Kitchen. The kitchen got remodeled last year, so they have a has a walk-in fridge, freezer still. But look at anyway, that. What was it like long. having a kitchen this big when you lived here? Like when I lived here, we were struggling to keep the. Oh, when before it wasn't like this. So oh. before, when I was in Warren's family, I made my first meal. <laughs> in the, I've said it before, but like I. Made my first meal for Warren's family in this kitchen. Wow. And he, he assigned me to that. And I chose carrot casserole and it ended up being pumpkin pie for the main course. <laughs> I was like, even better. Okay, I don't know how to cook. <laughs> how many people did you have to cook for? It was about 40 or 30, somewhere around there. Yeah. Wow. You're talking like things. Like, like, so pumpkin pie was fitting. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said anything. They didn't dare either. So. <laughs> okay, we'll go around that this way because, yeah, there's people in there. I don't know if people are in here too, but we'll see. So we've seen two kitchens in this house so far, or it used the to be The other one is the printing room. Oh, okay. And we just use it as a printing room. Okay, so it used to be a kitchen, but yeah, now it's a printing room. I see. Yeah. In there, there's another sitting room. Well, this is the library, we call it oh, the, the library. library. It has like computers for um, people who are trying to get food handlers and um, or maybe even get on food stamps. You know, oh, like wow. it's like we have codes on them, but we'll put the code in when they're ready to. Yeah, work it looks on like it. you have multiple computers. We also have there. video games. Oh, yeah. And then the TV, and the kids can play right there. So, And there's books on this side, and there's a bookshelf on this side. Wow. How many people do people buy their own food? Do, is it like, you know, everybody kind of combines food, or what does that look like? So they they usually they have a food bank too. The Dream Center has oh. a whole food bank. So they bought that, and it's over where the Radio Shack was. In the oh yes, okay. So that's their whole food bank process, oh, and they have a church over there too. Oh wow, in good. the same building. So the food bank usually the whole parking lot is paved, mm -hmm. and they just drive around and pick up their load of food and. Wow, okay. Yeah. So Every Friday and kitchen. Saturday. And this stocks. Yeah, that stocks the kitchens too. Okay. So she's cleaning in here, I think. So I'm assuming this is the dining room. This is the dining room. We have snacks all the time for residents. And some community members do come and eat with us. I'm sure we're here now. Yeah. And then this is the backyard. This is what I was talking about. They've done a lot in the back. All right. Ooh, so they have the greenhouse was totally taken out and redone. It was there before, but like. They did a whole new one, put the playground in. They have the basketball standards up again. So the person who set up the basketball standard after the Dream Center, he they hired somebody from the local because that's what they try to always do. Yeah, which is amazing. Yeah, and he was crying the whole time. And they were like, what's wrong? And he's like, well, I was the one who took him down. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. So he was assigned to take him down back yeah. then. Back when Warren banned all fun, right? Yeah, so this is the learning center, which we use for school still. We have like a oh the, the building there. back there yeah it's not it's not um I always like to say it's like transition from you know trying to get into public school yeah but it's, it's a big yeah that is a big people, big but, transition for people yeah it's a beautiful Look backyard there that is just <laughs> gorgeous and then the mountain behind and these three houses were on the lot when I got it so this one this one and this one this one is the director house that's where the director for the Dream Center yeah that's where they live. Wow. 
So these massive buildings behind here, I know it used to be Ruth and Jeff's home back there. What are those used for these days? So know? that is uh, like apartments and maybe some offices. They, okay. They made like another gents in a property got that. Oh, wow. Okay. And they made it, turned it, they're still turning it into like apartments they're and stuff. They're still working, actual apartments that you can buy. Well, not buy, like rent. To, to rent. That's, sorry, yeah. that's what I meant, to rent. Yeah. 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 So that's a good project too. So like the other building that was most wanted that was built after Warren Witch Prison is Hotel. So like, mm. you know, there's, there's something good happening. In yeah, that's building. good. These yeah. buildings are being used for good. And then um, I, I'm going to come on the main floor. Okay, so this is mostly offices on this floor because we have like tech and security and you know that some of the rooms we just passed were offices and oh, okay. security and good. You know, we have tons Lots of, of staff different only departments. type rooms. So this is the art room though. Oh. And they just got these new chairs, so oh, look and at this that. is so both the men and the women can utilize art therapy. So Wow. And we also pay each week for somebody in the community who does horse therapy. So like they call it equine. We do that. The Dream Center pays for a certain amount of people every single week in the community and also residents if they want to get equine in the community. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Now, you were saying before that almost every room has its own bathroom, right? Like you can see the scene. Yeah, this is the vanity. A lot of them have vanities too, but this room doesn't actually have its own bathroom, but most of them do. So originally, would like, is it each like, that a family would have a room, or was it like each child, or what did that look like? In the past, then the mothers would, you know, so have their like children. Their they have nurseries in a lot of them too. Oh, okay. okay. So, depending on the room, and yeah, the men, the boys were still in the basement when during that time too. During that time too. We have uh, in the garage. So I want to show you what's in the garage. It is the gym. <laughs> oh, look at so we that. We have our own gym here. That is a full setup, too. Yeah, so that they can take care of their mental and physical health. Whoa, I love this. That's so this is where the garage cool. used to be. Yeah, it was just a two-car garage, but that makes sense for that time frame. I mean, like, Warren Jess was the main person. Right, he would use he left, it. yeah. Wow. And that's awesome. <laughs> How about that? I, mean, I know. I'm like, I, 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 want, I want that gym in my garage now. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Okay. Then we're going to go upstairs a little bit. The common area for the ladies, and it has a setup for the kids, too. Oh, so you can that. see, like, this is a lot this is different a than the one. big room. Oh. This is a very big room. I don't know if yeah. you can see on camera how big this room is, but. Yeah. So this is more of the crisis wing. So we have four rooms down there. We try to keep them always open if we can until somebody. Oh, know. good. So there's always an open room to we go. Try or, or try, yeah. Yeah, and we do have a backlist too here because that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people all the time who need things. So. Yeah, that would be tough to keep up with all the needs. Yeah. So this is basically just room. So we probably won't go down there because it's like rooms all the way mm -hmm. around, like. Let me just show the hallway. Yeah. Once again, looks like a motel. <laughs> yeah. We have a porch a off this, off most of the upstairs ones for fire safety. So, yeah. Wow. That's on awesome. exit routes for people. I'm assuming based on the vaulted ceiling that we are at the top of the, <laughs> at the top of the building. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just amazing all that you're doing here for <laughs> everyone, and just the fact that there's a safe place to go. Yeah. And not only just a safe place, but a safe place where everyone that works here knows where these people are coming from, right? That's the biggest thing. Yeah. It's just being able to talk to them in a way that they will feel comfortable and kind of help them through this transition. And and with a team of people, it makes it easier because if they don't get along with one RA, they might get along with another one. Right. So then they feel comfortable talking. We try to make them comfortable all the time, but sometimes you know, details get in the way. So mm -hmm. they can usually find somebody on the team that they relate to though, right. and let us know at least. Yeah. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. How long is the typical, I know you said that people can stay as long as they need. How long is the typical stay here? It varies quite a bit from person to person. Like a lot of it has to do with if they can keep the peace in the house. And also they, they do drug test people. They do not allow smoking. They will help them get off smoking. So some of that, some people just can't do. 
Yeah. But, um, but that's what our program is for, is to help the people who really need it and are willing to do whatever it takes. So, but most of the people that come straight out of FLDS don't have those same issues. So that's who we're prioritizing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're really focused on um, more the people who need it from that angle. Right. Yeah. And it's usually not those same issues. So we're not as geared to help those issues, but we do have like the Phoenix Dream Center is geared for more of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if they're willing, we'll send them, we'll, we'll give them resources to other locations. Oh, okay. So whatever is the, a better fit for them. Yeah, because like this also has children here, which mm -hmm. is a really high license. So we have to be stricter. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Keep the kids safe. <laughs> yep. Wow. And would you mind telling our viewers again the website? that they can go to if they want to donate or find the wish list. Find the wish list. I know you had mentioned that to me and I didn't even know it was a thing. So I'm so grateful. We'll definitely put links link in the description sure. as yeah. well for the wish list. But. Yeah. So um, the website is shortcreekdreamcenter.org.